Good morning. Welcome to Exploring Economic Development with MEDC. I am Meredith Harris, and we are here for episode 22. Um, I'm really excited, Jill. We're jumping right into 22 it. 22 episodes. 22 episodes, yeah. No, that's just really awesome. It's exciting. And we've got a great guest today. Yeah. John Pizzoni. John Pizzoni. He's, yep. He's ready to go. He came in with coffee for us. First guest that has ever brought us coffee. Well done. Hopefully. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> that's right. So let's talk a little bit about last episode. Okay. Because now we're doing Exploring Economic Development. We're coming to you live on the first Wednesday at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. I know it, seems, it still seems a little funny because we were yeah. doing it every other week. Now it's just once a month, yep. so it makes it more exciting. Yes. Uh, but last episode we had Melinda Gallagher from La Shoe, one of our newest board members, awesome. yeah. one of our downtown. I don't want to say hidden jewels because it's not even a hidden no. hidden gem, hidden jewel. It's one of our crown jewels of yeah. downtown. We had such a great conversation with Melinda. Um, looking forward to continuing that conversation today with John, mm -hmm. who was actually Melinda's commercial broker, who brought Melinda and JP to downtown Marlboro. So that was really exciting. Yeah. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit today about commercial brokers and what does that mean? What is a commercial broker? Um, so we're excited about that. But before we jump into it, yes. a few administrative things that Jill Yes. Needs to so over. thank you so much for joining us on either Facebook or YouTube. We're happy that you're here. Uh, we can see a few of you guys are already jumping on watching. Thank you for being here. The best best way to participate is to comment. So you can let us know where you're watching from. You can let us know what questions you might have or anything you want us to clarify. Mm -hmm. If you jump in at any point, you can go ahead and comment. And if you're watching this on the replay, whether on our channels or on our live uh, public access channel, WMCT TV here in Marlboro, Massachusetts, you can reach out to us. Our number and our email are below. So let us know what your questions are if you have ideas for future episodes. Or if you have a coffee order for John, he's taking he's orders. He's taking them. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Even snacks. Even snacks. Even That's snacks. Right. Yep. So we've got a few people joining us. Hey, Billy Jean, thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you here. Awesome. Yeah. You want to jump into it? I think I think we should. Are we ready? I'm ready. John, welcome. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. This, is, this so is great. We're so excited to have you. So John is a longtime friend of Marlboro Economic Development, the city of Marlboro. John's dad is a board member of ours. I think he was one of the very first board members that we ever had at MEDC, like 2006 timeframe, Bill, who's a huge asset to us. And we got to know you through him and through your work at Avis and Young. So thank you for being here. Really excited to talk to you. No, it's great. Great to be here. And it's awesome what you guys have done, you know, at MEDC and the city and everything that you guys do. And the podcast is great. Thank Love you. Love everything. It, it's You've really been brought you it wanted up. to join the podcast for a while, so here you are. Yeah, I've been waiting for my invite, and here I am. Here you are. <laughs> You've got your Lashu coffee, so we're all, excited about that. All I had to do was bring coffee and some muffins, <laughs> and, and it's you let me guys. in. <laughs> we got you to spend your money in downtown Marlboro this morning. So of course. I love it. It's Helping awesome. the local economy. All right, so tell us a little bit about yourself. You are a new, new dad. We can still say new, right? Yeah, nine months. Nine months. Nine months. How's that going? It's been great. It's been great. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, we're we're starting. We're getting some sleep now. So that's awesome. Um, no, he he's awesome. Jack's great. Good. Uh, just a wild man. He's a wild. Little, they always are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Giving us a run for our money for sure. But he allows you to get some work done once in a while. Yes, yes, once in a while. Um, so what do you do? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people that are watching this. That some people might know what a commercial broker is. Sure. I'm sure they know what a real estate broker is when they're talking about buying a home or something like that. But I don't think people always know that commercial brokers even exist. Yeah. So what, what is What do you do? Yeah. Just like, you know, just like what anyone does when they're going to find a home, they need a broker yep. um, to help that process navigate those waters. And on the commercial side of things, we help companies and businesses, you know, large and small, mm -hmm. um, you know, navigate those waters. So we help identify, you know, corporate goals, yep. uh, workplace strategy, um, ideal locations, um, hiring projections. And we take all those factors and we try to identify the best fit for that business's needs and land them in a location. So you, all right. So you're dealing with like small companies, you're talking like what under 10 employees at times sure. to companies of I don't know, 150, 200 employee, you know, even on yeah. the bigger side, you guys can deal with both, right? Yeah, we, yeah, we go from, you know, recently we actually just completed a lease for uh, a group that just moved into Marlboro on All Cedar right. Hill. And they only have about three employees. Awesome. Um, a small, small lab group. And awesome. that's been great. 
And then we've also done work with companies that have a national global presence. And that's right. kind of being a part of Avis and Young. We're able to accommodate the growth of our clients, not just locally and regionally, but across the country and, right. and the globe. All right. So tell us a little. So Avis and Young, tell us about where you work. Mm-hmm. What What is Avis and Young all about? Give us the lowdown. So we're the largest privately owned commercial real estate firm um, in the world. Okay. Um, we're headquartered out of Canada, so no kidding, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, pretty nice group of people. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, obviously. Um, and Avison Young has a Boston office um, okay. that was opened. So I started at AY uh, after I graduated from Providence College in yep. 2014. Okay. Um, they had been around a few years prior. Um, we've grown the shop from a few brokers to now, I believe it's over 50. Wow. So, yeah, we've, we've been in growth mode. Um, and this is just the Boston office? Yeah, this is just the Boston okay. office. Yeah, so, um, you know, we have over 5,000 employees, you know, uh, when Full you time. look at corporate. Yeah, yeah. all the offices across um, the country. We've had strategic acquisitions in the U.K., Germany, um, Mexico. So it's really kind of all over the place. All right, so... And this is a question I have. Do you, how often are you talking with folks at Avis and Young across the country? Like, like, do they call you and say, hey, I've got a company that's looking to come to the Boston market. We need your help. Yeah. Is that kind of how that works? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and in return, we do the same. So, you know, I have one of my clients, we just opened up an office for them in San Diego. We did a sublease on their behalf down in Atlanta. Okay. Um, we're working on a deal down in Tampa right now. So, um yeah, it kind of brings us all over the place, which is really neat because all these markets are different. Right. Um, and you get to collaborate with your colleagues across the country. And so you guys are all, like, you're on the Metro West team mm-hmm. in Boston, right? Yeah. And we talked, so we had um, John Weaver on a couple weeks ago, and we talked yeah. a lot about, like, the importance of, you know, JLL bringing on Travis McCready and Bob Coughlin recently, yeah. things like that. Um, but you guys all talk to each other too, right? So as much as it's competitive... You guys are all working together all the time to make deals yeah. happen. Like sometimes you rep the building, but then you also rep a tenant, right? So the, how do those relationships work? So you're like with other brokers in the market. Yeah, the, you know, especially I think in Metro West compared to a lot of other markets, it's a really tight knit community yeah. amongst the brokerage well, community. The, and the same people have been around for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, yep, a lot of, a lot of experience. Same faces. Yeah, same faces. Um, and although it's there's competition, there's it's healthy competition, and we all work together real well. So right. you, know, you can pick up the phone, text, call, you mm-hmm. know, um, other brokers, and they're more or less colleagues. Right. Um, right. So yeah, you have the JLL team, you have all these other teams that are. We all do a bunch of work together. Yeah, we so we most typically see in like in Marlboro like Colliers, JLL, yep. CBRE, yep. Avis and Young. You know, the the Kelleher Sadowski that's out of Worcester now. Yeah. We've been working with them a lot, but you know, all these local teams that work so well together. Um, but we've been talking for since the beginning of the podcast the importance of different relationships mm-hmm. and the relationships that we have with brokers. I think is one of the most important relationships that we have when it comes to business attraction for the city. Yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely. And you know, JLL has done a great job with their recent hiring, and um, you know, they're they have a big focus on the life science. So, well, no kidding, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and Marlboro's done a great job as of late trying to track those life science companies. Right. I mean, having John Weaver on a couple episodes ago, and I know John real well. Yeah. You know, he's really built up Worcester. Yeah. Um, and look at where Worcester is today. There's no lab available, no right. space available. Right. Because he's been good growing. Problem. These, yeah, good problem to have, <laughs> I know. right? But it, in in turn, it creates for more development opportunities. And, uh, yeah. And with these companies that are coming out of MBI. Right. They need to find a location to go to, and Worcester, uh, Marlboro's right down the street from Worcester. Right. So. Yeah. Well, and I think it, we talked about this too in the last couple episodes with John, and, and we've talked about it before, but all those companies want to be near each other. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, so the life science companies, they want to be in the same ecosystem, and, and it's yeah. a proven model that you can find employees or that you can get the access yeah. you need or the infrastructure, things like that. Um, so it's, it's interesting. It's interesting to see commercial brokers or the firms taking that real interest in a one specific industry. I just find that really interesting. Yeah, and across the country, I think you find, you know, in in larger markets. Now, greater Boston is 
relatively small compared to other markets across the country, right? right. So, um, you know, especially when it comes to life science, everyone originally thought, hey, Cambridge, Boston, mm-hmm. Seaport, everyone needs to be in there. Well, if you compare not the it case. to the, yeah, uh, not the case. You know, when you look at the research triangle um, and, and these other markets across mm-hmm. the country, they're on a square footage basis and a geography basis, much larger than Cambridge. Right. So, in fact, they're from Cambridge out to Worcester, if you look at a geography. Yeah, I remember I remember years ago when I first started, Tim Cummings showing me, like, a map, and it was, like, Chicago, it was, like, greater Chicago area, mm-hmm. and, and it showed, like, where Marlboro was in comparison to Boston when you overlaid with Chicago, and it was... It's right there. Yeah, it, it's, it's right crazy, because <laughs> people think that, you know, a, immediately people will say, like, well, how far are you guys from Boston? Well, in reality, not that far. No, right? not at all. Right. right. Not at all. Do we have a question, a comment? We have a great comment. Okay. put on the screen here. Lost Shoes. Lost Shoes chimed in. <laughs> John is the best. He was instrumental in getting the deal done with our location in downtown Marlboro and helped make our vision a reality. That's a great that's, comment. That's awesome. And I Melinda, we're, we are drinking Lost Shoe coffee <laughs> right are. now. We are. Can we, get a, can we get a plug? Let's get a little <laughs> plug. There we, we go. go. Here we go. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's awesome. Thanks for joining us, Melinda. That's great. Um, so, John, tell me a little bit. We've talked a little bit about commercial real estate, that type of thing. I want to talk more about the market, too, maybe a little bit later. But how do you typically work with, like, an economic development office? Is your relationship with MEDC unique in any way or how does that kind of play out yeah i mean i think our relationship is unique in the fact that you know we've done a lot of work together right and other communities do have edc you know yep. groups and but the difference between you guys and others are how invested you are in the community mm-hmm. um and you're just it's a great resource to have especially when you're bringing a company in from out of town that you know might have zoning questions, uh, you know questions about new development, right? Um, you know resources where, um, hey, we want to talk to um, city officials. You guys are right there to provide all those introductions. Right. So, yeah, well, and I think great. it's interesting to like when a company. I mean, you guys are working in so many different communities, right? So, it as much as you want to know every single aspect of every single community, yeah. that's a difficult order, right? <laughs> sure. So I, I believe it's probably helpful to you to be able to call and say like, hey, what do you have available or what's coming on that we maybe not are aware of, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. It's that whole boots on the ground idea of like, we should be the ones that are talking to the locals mm-hmm. that, yeah. hey, I might want to sell at some point or there's this opportunity that might be good for somebody that might not necessarily have hit the listing yet. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, you guys are a local resource center. Right. I mean, and, and it and it helps a lot because you're the first people that a company meets when they want to come into the area. Right. Right. So, right. you know, open doors, you know, all the questions that they have about the community. Because right. what's really interesting about Marlboro, and you can see it on, you know, your board of directors, MEDC's board of directors, is that you have these companies that are really invested into the community. Absolutely. Where, I, you know, I think a lot of other locations and maybe cities and towns, you know, they're there, the employees come, mm-hmm. they they work in the, the city, they work in the town, they, you know, u- utilize the retail in the area, then they go home. Then they go home. And I think what's really unique about the companies in Marlboro is that they're really invested in the community. They want to be a part of MEDC. They want to be a part of whatever, you know, uh, the parades that you guys have right downtown. So right, it's, right. it's really unique in that aspect. Have you brought Jack to the parade yet? We have not. <laughs> we have not. But when Jack... It's really fun. And he will be coming. Good. So, all right. And so another plug for our breweries downtown, but during the Labor Day Parade, yep. the breweries all get together in front of Flying Dreams, have like a tent they set up, and you can watch the parade while having a beer from one of our three local breweries. So a, good. A Sold, beer, right? A beer and a bottle. A beer and a <laughs> bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Only way to go. I got four kids. I highly recommend it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. That's we'll be awesome. doing it. Yeah. That's awesome. No, we'll, we'll definitely be doing that. Right. All right. So I know you can't, you probably can't tell us a lot about like names of companies, specific sure. things like that. However, what are some deals that you guys have done in Marlboro? And I, I know we've kind of scratched the surface on Lost Shoe, but 
give us a little more color on that. So, I mean, that literally started, I remember you calling me and saying like, hey, I've got this, and we and this happens all the time. Hey, I've got this yeah. group that's looking for X, Y, Z. Yeah. And sometimes we go down a rabbit hole where like, I can't find anything for them. And Marlboro has a good problem these days. There's not a lot of land left available to develop. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that are going on. There's a lot of, we do have a lot of open space, things like that, which is all preserved. But in terms of our commercial space, um, we don't necessarily have a lot of land left for developers mm-hmm. to come in and do anything. And so it's often looking at buildings that are already existing and how do you reuse, how do you revitalize, things like that. So um, that's my long winded way of saying, <laughs> what deals have you done in Marlboro? What's some cool stuff that's been going on over the past couple of years? Yeah. So great question. You know, we've done a lot, you know, when it comes to development and new development, you're absolutely right. Marlboro not, does not have a lot of land left for new development. Mm-hmm. Uh, we recently sold a 12 acre parcel on the corner of Route 20 and Hayes Memorial to Lincoln Property. That's right. Um, yep. And that parcel, it's, it's just raw land that sat there forever, right? right. Um, In the industrial park, right? Yeah, 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 yep. And what's unique about it is that it's on Route 20 where most of those other buildings are tucked up behind, right. um, up on Nickerson Road and, and back there, Cedar Hill and Cimarano. So that deal will be one of the that, that will be a you know new construction. Lincoln's going to build 120,000 square feet of flex R and D mm-hmm. um, GMP uh, facility. Okay, so all right for people who don't know any of what you just said, flex R and D GMP. Sure. Break it. Facility. I was right. about to chime in because I'm kind of here representing the the general the residence. Term, right? So what? So 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 what <laughs> does that? Down. Yeah. So what does right. that mean? Great question. So. <laughs> Where you have your traditional office space, yep. right? You have your retail space. Now, flex, R&D, a lot of that can be done on single story. So this is a single story building. Mm-hmm. Um, going to be probably around 30, 28 to 30 foot clear. So the, the height of the building will be that tall. Mm-hmm. Um, and what will go on inside the building won't necessarily be warehouse distribution like you've seen in other towns like the Amazons and, and yeah. mm. the Walmarts of the world. Right. But you'll have companies come in, more or less life science companies come in and be manufacturing their products in there. Okay. Um, there might be some distribution, there might be assembly. Right. So it's really more built here and then sent out. And so, all right, Jill, so we and we talk about this a lot, but Marlboro, that's kind of been our strategy is to to attract that type of business, right? Yeah. Because yeah. the the taxes that are collected on that type of industry right. um, are far more beneficial to the community than a distribution center or sure. a warehouse or something like that. So yeah. that's a really attractive, exciting development that for economic development purposes, we look at that and say, that's a huge win. It's also a huge anomaly to, mm. I've never seen a company come in and be building on spec, right? They yep. normally have the tenant that's set up and ready to go. That's not the case anymore. Mm. Right yeah. now, the life science industry, and I know we keep saying this, but but it's true. It is so hot right now. And mm. a lot of that is not even necessarily due to COVID, but I do think that there's a lot more attention on the life science industry right now. But it's brought to the attention of people that these companies and these, these this industry needs this type of space today. Mm. They don't, you know, they they come yeah. to the table, right, John? I mean, they and they can't wait for a year for you to build them a building. Right. So companies like LPC are saying, okay, well, we're going to build the building because we're confident that the tenants are in the market and that they're looking for the space. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, right. that's exact. I mean. Are you sure you want to do economic development? <laughs> you can come. Yes, yes. You'd be she right. Does. You'd be <laughs> no, perfect. She's that was great. We I love it. L- Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's just because of the great relationships that I know all this good stuff. I love right? it. I absolutely love it. I love it. No, that's great. No, that's no. Awesome. The, you, you, you put it perfectly. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I think that's for years we've been looking at life sciences and we're how do we get them more in here? But, and I've said this a million times on this this program. Before the pandemic, we we laid the groundwork to mm. make sure that post pandemic, which we didn't even know was coming, right. that we were going to be able to be successful. Yeah, and I think that is a prime example of the trend and how yeah. it's going in the market and all that kind of good yeah. stuff. Well, and I think. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 you guys. I was going to say. So what you guys have done, and Marlboro EDC is you've worked through the zoning, right? Mm-hmm. You've seen every every town zoning is. Pro, pretty old, right? And, and, including and, ours, including Marlboro, right? But where you guys have, what you guys have done is identified certain areas mm-hmm. where, okay, 
maybe we can redevelop this or create right. uh, an area where you know these buildings are all two-story buildings mm -hmm. that's allow the zoning uh, to increase the building height to go up four stories five right. stories so you know to be to have the ability to accommodate these types of requirements as right. they come in and being strategic about that you're allowed to you know, attract these types of companies, the life science companies, the office users, the manufacturers. Um, right. But, and to your point, and I think it's an important point, especially for residents that are watching, it is strategic. Yeah. Right. You know, and so, and I, I mentioned this before, but we do have a lot of conservation land and we have mm -hmm. a lot of parks and recreation and those are, you know, all of these things together is what builds a community. Yep. Right. But we've been able to pinpoint specific sections of the city that are prime for development, that are good for development, mm. um, to try and create that balance across the entire community. Yeah. Right. Question, comment. Yes. Love all it. right. Well, we've got a great comment from our friend Spencer. Hi, Spencer. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for being here. So Spencer says, uh, what's the hardest part about securing commercial real estate and what tactics do you use to get companies here through that real estate? Okay, with the nice questions, All right, questions, yeah, hold on. Spencer. Let's read that and yeah. absorb this. Or what is the hardest part about securing commercial real estate? Uh -huh. And what tactics do you use to get companies here through that real estate? I yeah. mean, I can answer that from an MEDC perspective. Mm -hmm. So that's where like our economic development toolbox comes into play, right? Mm -hmm. So there's also, we've talked a lot about the TIF program, things like that. Yep. Um, those are the tools that the state and local communities, I mean, I have available to them to try and attract a company one from one community to the other. Do you see any other communities, John, doing the type of incentives that we do in Marlboro? Not to the extent. To the small local level. Yeah, yeah. I think what, what Marlboro EDC, where you guys are differentiate yourselves from others is that you can focus on, you know, the large, the Fortune 500 to the Fortune 100s, right? right? Mm. But at the same time, create grants and other opportunities for some of the mid-size to right. maybe smaller businesses in the local called mom and pops that really need that step forward and that, that assistance to get up and running. Right. So where a lot of the other EDCs are looking for that, you know, the, the golden goose, right? The, the, right. The, yeah, the, the, big, the big one. The big one to come through. So. Which is great. We love the big fish. That yeah. goes back to, yeah. episode, I think it was episode two. Yep. The big fish big feed fish, the small feed fish. The small fish, absolutely. But I, I, I do think Marlboro has been, ahead, you know, ahead of their years, whatever you want to call it, very innovative in terms of the big fish are great. But at the end of the day, if you don't have any small fish that are playing in the pond either, what's right. the point, right? Yeah. So yeah. we've been able to attract some some smaller to mid-sized companies that then grow into these bigger companies. Yeah. Um, and they, they provide just as great of job opportunities. They're mm -hmm. still eating in our rest. I mean, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. So there's one company recently. So Lost Shoe was one that took advantage of the toolbox. We talked about mm -hmm. that with Melinda last week. Not last week, last month. Mm -hmm. um, but another one, XL Batteries, is a is sure. a company that's coming in um, th th out of Brooklyn, New York. Yep. Uh, but they they took advantage of the toolbox as well. So we were able to work with Tom. Um, he's a, a young guy just out of college. He's starting a, a company. I won't even begin to try and explain what they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a battery storage type of manufacturing, really cool manufacturing, yeah. advanced manufacturing. Um, technology, but they're moving into 33 Lock Drive. Yeah, and so I think that's an interesting segue too. Of you guys rep tenants mm -hmm. and companies, but you also rep buildings, right? That's right. Yeah. Right. So tell us a little bit about that as well. Yeah. So that's a unique, unique building in a in a unique transaction mm -hmm. all at the same time. So 33 Lock Drive was built um, for Separacore, which ends up through different acquisitions and growth is now one of Marlboro's largest tenants. Synovian. Synovian. Right. So I did not know that. Yeah, pretty interesting, right? Not that it was separate. I didn't know that 33 Lock Drive was built for them. Yeah, so there, so there you go. You have this, interesting. this 60, lower 60,000 square foot building, and right. now look at their campus, their beautiful campus that they have. Right. That, you know, it's much larger than right. that. So right. um, because of that, 33 Lock Drive has a lot of existing lab infrastructure. Okay. So over the years, um, we've had companies like Astellas yep. um, that have moved into Marlboro and outgrew their space. Mm -hmm. They were in about called 30,000 square feet there, outgrew their space, and they've moved to Westboro into 250,000 square feet. Yeah, so, big requirement. Yeah, huge requirement. But in doing that, these companies have come in, they've renovated the labs, and they've put upgrades into exactly. the infrastructure. Yeah, Absolutely. and and 
companies that are looking for lab space and kind of going back to our point that you don't have to be in Cambridge or Boston right. or even 128. Marlboro is right here and Metro West is right here. Right and it's readily that. available. It's in it's in they want to be in yesterday. A lot of these companies do. So right. uh, we were able to uh, put together a deal. There's been a lot of competition mm-hmm. on the lab front for securing lab space. So we really looked into what does the company do? Um, what's their growth plan? Um, and kind of partnering with you guys determined it was the right fit for the building right. and for the city. So didn't Rewalk start there too? Uh, I I think they did. I they think might you, have. I don't think you guys had the building at the time. Yeah. But I remember. So Rewalk was actually Rewalk's a really cool company in Marlboro. Um, they do exoskeletons, so they're helping paraplegics Super stand cool. wow. and walk. It's a really incredible company. But they were actually our very first toolbox recipient was Rewalk. Um, they had moved from 33 Lock Drive, mm-hmm. but we our goal at MEDC was to keep them in the city. We knew they were looking for more space. Yeah. They mm-hmm. needed to. To, to go elsewhere, they need to, to have a bigger footprint. Um, and it, it came down to a loading dock, yeah. right? Wow. So it was kind of a cool story. So <laughs> they were looking at two buildings. There was another community in Marlboro, um, but now they're over on Donald Lynch Boulevard, and they needed a little bit of seed money to build a loading dock in order to keep them in the community. Yeah. And so we were able to use the toolbox uh, program to help them fund the, the loading dock. That's and awesome. And here they are, uh, gosh, I guess six, six years later still in that same space, still yeah. using the loading dock. Yeah. Um, so really kind of cool. Absolutely. Yeah, just a cool way that we're yeah. able to partner with these folks. And honestly, I don't think a lot of the smaller companies would know that we have things like the toolbox available to them yeah. if we didn't partner with folks like John. Yeah. And you, you know what we'll do? We'll make sure that, um, that we link our video so you, if you're interested in learning more about the toolbox and how to apply or how you might be able to you know learn more about some of the services not to, not to just jump in and give a little no please <laughs> make sure you reach out to us but we'll drop it in the link on the description um and on facebook as well and right. yeah reach out to us if any of this sounds interesting to you or if you want to learn more about it right yeah so on that note john if there's a small company or even a mid-sized company or a large company that's watching how how can you help them that's a great question so <laughs> <laughs> So basically, in, in a, as I kind of alluded to earlier, the way we do this is we really want to get to know the company, mm-hmm. what they do, what their goals are. Um, consider us more or less in-house, mm-hmm. you know, in-house real estate brokers for them, advisors. Right. So the more we get to know them, the better off we are to try to find the property that best suits them. Right. Um, and Because this would be a right fit all around. Yeah. So it's not just finding an office space and plugging them in and saying, okay, thanks, that's it. You know, we want to make sure we're partnering them with, you know, the right landlord. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, um, figuring out what do you really need for your build-out? What are your three, five, ten-year growth plan? Um, right. So we can work with your workplace strategy. Um, and kind of, you know, what's interesting about Avis and Young is they've invested a lot in their product management group. Okay. Workplace strategy. So COVID was an interesting time where a lot of these office tenants were saying, do we need an office space? Do we want to come back to the office? How right. much office space do we need? Right. I mean, every everyone knows, everyone gets that, hey, let's try to make our office as efficient as possible. Sure. But it takes some measurement and not just, you know, crossing on offices or desks and, and right. whatnot. So, <clears throat> you know, we have, we have worked with our project management team and bringing in kind of this, uh, an architect to really you know study these companies study what they're looking for and be able to fit them out with either if it's a hybrid model where right. some folks are working from home or hoteling desks and and whatnot crazy yeah it's, it's things like things you whole, never thought you'd be talking no about, right? no i mean you know i think you know years ago it used to be hey we need <clears throat> x amount of offices we have this amount Done. of employees and we're looking for uh, a glass door to entrance way <laughs> so on. you know it's, it's changed a lot from there and it's, it's definitely it's been great because it's been able to partner with the right landlords and the right brokers and right and the right community for these businesses well so i and kind of a, I guess off off topic but at the same topic i remember when i first started medc the the big new trend right was like the mayor and I would be going into these company meetings just to touch base with companies in the city and what do you need? How can we help sure. you? And we found that most of the the landlords were investing in their space to make like cool 
space for employ to try and attract employees, right? So years ago, we we were trying to do things like Zagster and like to mm. add on to that like cool amenity based yeah. Yeah. attraction package. Where's the ping pong the table? <laughs> well, in no, the honestly, office. like we don't have one here, but <laughs> that's okay. Maybe we can get one, Jill. <laughs> we have this great studio. You, you, need, the the, you need the beer cake. You need the the beer cake. Well, honestly, so like I, the one that pops in my mind was um, Wakefly was like the first one that I ever mm, walked yeah. into at 293 Boston Post Road. And they literally had like draft like beer, like in at the end of the workday, people could go up and just like grab a beer. And I remember yeah. saying to Dean, like, do people like, are people like drinking beer during the day? And he's like, honestly, they're not. But the fact that it's just available and yeah. like at 430, if it's a long afternoon, people can sit and collaborate with their team members. It does a lot more of that than yeah. it does anything negatively. Yeah. yeah. And then Knowledge Park was doing something similar. And then they're putting in like kombucha drafts <laughs> yeah. at Whole Foods yeah. had one, They've like coffee drafts, yeah. like nitro. But all that kind of really cool stuff was happening pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I guess I'm just interested. Do you do you see like a lot of those investments that were made, are people still doing that kind mm -hmm. of stuff now that office is becoming, dare I say, a thing of the past? Or is it becoming a thing of the past? What, what do you think? Definitely not a thing of the past. <laughs> Good. <Okay. laughs> people are I still drinking beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People still want space? their beer and their wine. <laughs> so, right. No, so it's, you know, when when Wakefly did that um, and, you know, ownership at Knowledge Park, mm -hmm. Bob McNamara and John Connolly, when they made those renovations to the lobbies, the common areas, and, and created those amenities, I think a lot of other developers and landlords in the area saw this and said, wow, that's we should cool. be doing the same thing yeah. to attract tenants. Right. Um and it used because to be, that can honestly tip the scale, right? Yeah, absolutely. And You're it right. used to be, you know, do they have a fitness center? Mm -hmm. Do they have mm -hmm. a cafe? You know, and and the cafeterias are more or less a thing in the past, mm -hmm. especially because I mean, it's one thing if you have a large company, right? Um, in a in a large property, it makes yeah. sense. But for smaller ones, I mean, Marlboro's done a great job of of putting together retail in the area, right? Um, the Apex, the Apex center. center, yeah. I yeah. mean, it, it's a short walk or a drive depending on where you're at right. so plenty of um options options food amenities everything so right. um but and that was literally because of a conversation about um, employee attraction oh absolutely mm. you, know, you know like being able to have all those things that employees that they can find the young millennials that are just coming yeah. out of school what they're looking for in boston you can actually still find it out here yeah yeah right. yeah. yeah i think a part of it is it's you know everyone focuses on the younger employees but at the same time your older employee base they like it just, just they like as to much. eat too <laughs> yeah and they like to drink so it's and they it's, actually have more money so <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's it, it it works for everyone you know i can tell you at avis and young in our mm -hmm. office um now, I'm not sure. Have you? Were you? Did you come to? I think visit? right before the pandemic, there was like a Christmas yeah, get together so, or something. Yeah, I think you've been. So um, we took the top two floors at mm -hmm. Tourist State, and um, we laid it out completely. You know, open space, but right. you know, you put in the the kegs and 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 all that, and it really fosters this community collaboration. Yeah, and and you know, at the end of the workday. You can relax, maybe talk a little work, talk a little shop, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, but you're still working together. Right. And where, you know, is off office a thing in the past? I mean, these companies need to be together right. to create a culture. You right. can't create a culture from your house. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think, I almost think it was a good, like, so in the middle of the pandemic, I think if you'd asked anybody we're gonna get rid of our office completely, right? Mm. But the fact that people were locked into leases and yeah. they've had to wait to make the decision until maybe mm -hmm. now yeah. is probably a good thing because I, I think people will stay, they, they might downsize a little bit. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna be in as big of an office space as they were, yeah. but I think you'll see a lot of people doing yeah. hybrid models, things like that, which is just gonna be the new, the new way. Yeah. But with that being said, the life sciences, again, goes back to them, they're not downsizing, right? Mm -hmm. They're getting much bigger. So no. again, back to that reuse, you know, looking at existing buildings and how do you convert them into what is needed now? I think that's what a lot of people are, are grappling with. Yeah, yeah, and we're doing that a lot um, at 33 Lock Drive. Um, we're looking at that, um, how to convert office space to lab space, right? Yeah. 
we're looking at it at 100 Crowley, mm-hmm. um, which is one of the newer office buildings that yep. have been built in the city. You're right. Um, there's a little bit of vacancy there, and we're looking at how to convert that vacancy right. to attract uh, life science and, and lab users. Right. So that's a really cool area too. So that's right near Assabet Valley, um, right off of 290. Yeah. Um, and the Resilience Bio is moving in right next door, which is really kind of cool. So that's a, a cool awesome. area. Such a central, yeah. Yeah, easy access Easy spot. access, yeah. And right on the rail trail. Yeah. Literally, you could take your lunch break and walk down the rail trail, which is really kind of cool. That's awesome. I mean, so. I think that's a great story in and itself. Mm-hmm. Resilience coming in. Amazing. I mean, they could have gone to other communities. Mm-hmm. and Could have gone anywhere in the country. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're, they're mm-hmm. opening up places left and right. Right. And they chose Marlboro. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's great. what we like. That's, that's, that's kudos <laughs> to you guys. Credit to you guys <laughs> for, for that. So It's awesome. So believe it or not, we are running out of time. Yeah. But before we let you go, we want to have a little fun with John because mm-hmm. we know that you frequent Marlboro. Oh, yeah. You might not live in Marlboro, <laughs> but you certainly work and play in Marlboro. That's right. Um, and John's wife is a teacher in Marlboro Ooh, let's, as well. Let's show a little picture before we do that. Great. Let's see So it. we've got a picture of your wife here in Yay. her classroom with a little special guest. <laughs> <laughs> Meredith, what's going on in this picture? So, like, that was 2018, I think, time frame. We were at Richer. Yeah. Um, but one of the, I think it's the Dr. Seuss time frame where people come in to read to the students yeah. and things like that. So I was very lucky to be paired up with Erica's class and go in and, and read to the students. That was a lot of fun. But That's awesome. She's great. She's great. So you must take her out on dates once in a while in the city. I mean, I don't yeah, when we can, we, 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 when we can get a babysitter, <laughs> right. when when Nana and Nano can, can can come up and watch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, Marlboro's yeah. a, a place. We're gonna get we, Bill we, over the bridge. He comes up to yep, watch the yep. baby. And absolutely, all that good stuff. All right, so we're gonna play a game. It's called Where Do You Go? Where okay. Do You Go? The only rules about Where Do You Go is you have to tell it. It has to be Marlboro location. So we're oh great, okay. We're plugging all of our favorite Marlboro <laughs> yep. spots, right? All right, so I we'll hope have, we, so. We, <laughs> yeah, we've got a couple. Might of be the scenarios. same spot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jill. All right, let it rip. First scenario: you just close a deal with a client and you're looking to celebrate. Where do you go? Ooh. Um, so definitely depends on the client. <laughs> definitely depends on the client. But if it's if it's casual and, and beers and whatnot. Lashu. Lashu. All right. It's, yeah. There you Lashu. go. That's awesome. Um, and you can bring food into Lashu. That's right. And I think you can order and have stuff delivered, delivered from all the surrounding mm-hmm. restaurants too. So they they have a thing now where and I was so bummed. This is I was bummed in a really good way. A couple weekends ago, we went to try and get into the Forbidden Forest at Lashu on a Saturday night. Mm-hmm. They were slammed. We could yeah. not get in, which is a really great problem yes. to have yeah. uh, for me in Marlboro. But <laughs> they were they had to partnered with like Street Kitchen. I think was literally delivering through the back door. So yeah. like you could order from your table at Lashu, and Street Kitchen would bring it in the back door. That's to amazing. Your table. It's yeah, it's great. It's an incredible model. Yeah, love it. All right, what's our next All right, scenario? next one. It's Friday and you're going out for date night. Oh, date night. Mm. Erica would love this. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, when are we going? Yeah, now you have me on record, too. Yep. <laughs> um, date night. Uh, so we there's probably two places that mm-hmm. we would choose. More than two, but two that come to mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's uh, Fish right across the street. All right, okay. Uh, we, we frequent that. Yep. And uh, probably Wellies. I get two nice. of my favorites as well. Yeah. <laughs> Chick- what do you get there? Chicken, Chicken Parm Night. Yeah. Chicken, Chicken Parm Night yeah. is my If we jam. can find a table. Right. You yeah. Know? I don't want to say <laughs> yeah, that. My tough. daughter has legitimately grown up going to Chicken Parm Night. I know. That's awesome. That's awesome. Great. That's That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> All right. Next one. It's Sunday afternoon and you're out with the baby. <laughs> <laughs> where does the baby like to go? Where does the baby? Where, where would Jack like to go? <laughs> Jack like where, to go? where would this nine-month-old? Come on, uh, Jack. Spit it out. He. Like his dad would probably like to go to a brewery. A brewery. <laughs> a brewery. Right. And we just keep on plugging Lost Shoe. That's but all right. We will frequent any brewery uh, in Marlboro. And the beauty of Lost Shoe, again, not to give them too, too much love, but the dog can come too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And Which the have... dog loves Marlboro. He yeah. loves the, the ED... dog loves Marlboro. He, Bogey loves the EDC office. I think he's <laughs> he been really here once. Does. So <laughs> we so, are pretty dog. He was friendly. really he was a really little small puppy and John I remember you came to stop by for something. You're like, Can I bring my dog in? 
bring him in. Why yeah. not? Lost yeah. until once in a while. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but okay, so again, Lashu does some sort of like, like beer. Like for the pups, it's like bone. I don't know. Melinda, I think, talked about it at the last yeah, episode, awesome. but it is really kind of yeah. cool. And the other place in Marlboro that you can bring your dog, um, and they really encourage it, is chill. So they yeah. have like the dog patio. They have yep. like dog nights that you yeah. can bring the dog. Anyways, and we'd we probably digress. also, we'd probably you know if it's if the weather is appropriate, we'd mm-hmm. go the rail trail. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, on, up on Jefferson Street behind uh, was it Pinnacle Fitness? Yep. Yeah, you can park right over there and, and walk. Take that rail trail with you know the dog, the baby, stroller, everything. Well, awesome. and you're getting there only nine months, but there's a playground right there too. Yep. So you're you're literally yeah. describing my Sunday. Right? <laughs> yep, it's perfect. It's everything that you need. That's right. Yeah, awesome. All right, we got two more. Okay. You've got a lunch meeting with a potential client. Lunch meeting. Uh, the places I've gone most for lunch meetings probably uh, 110 110 grill nice. Apex. yeah yeah absolutely yeah what's yeah. your go-to uh, on the menu I always forget the name of it so I just <laughs> I just tell them what it's it's like the caprese salad Ooh, yummy. but it's they put like a nice uh, like chicken cutlet on it so nice. yeah. yeah all right yeah they're great what time yeah. is it I'm getting hungry <laughs> <laughs> my kids always order the um the antipasto your kids do? Yeah, cuz we we got I ordered it once because they saw blueberries in it, right? So it's this platter. Blueberries in it. I eat all of the cheese <laughs> and the yeah, the antipasto, like the 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 tray, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and so a I charcuterie? Eat, yeah, it's like a charcuterie board. Yeah. <laughs> so they eat the bread and the fruit and I eat all of the cheese. The rest of it. <laughs> cheese and pickles and all the good stuff. That's good. Big <laughs> jam. All right, last one. And I love this one. This is a good one. All right, you want to take your dad out for a guy's night. Where are you bringing Bill? <laughs> Where are you bringing Bill, Z? Where am I bringing Bill? Um, so we'd probably start off, um, we'd see if we'd, we would go over to Marlboro Country Club. Where okay. He used to be a member over there. Is he a good golfer? He's a great golfer. <laughs> well, I don't know why great, I would doubt that. Great, great golfer. Um, so... He he used to be a member there, so we'd probably I would it would be great to play a round over there. Yep. That's where I learned how to play. Very frustrated when I was younger trying to play. It was just such a hard course. Such a hard course. Um, today would be I'd be way more relaxed. You'd be but, better. Yeah, yeah, safe to say. From when I was real little. Yeah. Um so we'd play there. Um and then probably for old times' sake, because when I, I grew up in Southboro, right on the Marlboro line, and we frequent uh, Kennedy's a lot. Yeah, yeah. You, so you also have to take him to Wildwood because your dad loves oh, the Wildwood. How could I forget? <laughs> right? Okay. Yes. He course. loves the Wildwood, so of you need course. to take him there. So you yeah. guys are having a big night out. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like it's more <laughs> of a weekend. It sounds like more of a weekend trip. <laughs> All right. Now the real question: Who's paying? You or Bill? Of course, I'll pay. <laughs> You'll pay. Okay, Bill. You heard it here first. <laughs> he knows that. He knows that. That's awesome. That's he's awesome. paid for a lot of my meals. So. <laughs> I'm sure he he's got to return the favor. <laughs> awesome. John, we've uh, had too much fun with you today. This has so. been awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. It's really interesting, insightful, and I love these podcasts because honestly, I think we've brought in some really different perspectives, different people, and it all ends up coming back to some of the same stuff, mm. which is kind of neat. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for the coffee and the, the treats. And we're going to join you for your guys night because it sounds like a lot of fun. So. <laughs> You're welcome to join us. Awesome. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We will see you again April. I don't have the date off the top of my head, but the first Wednesday of April, we're going to have a really cool episode for you coming up. Um, we're doing a special edition of economic development, exploring economic development called Inside the Industry, uh, where we're actually going to have a couple of guests join us to talk about Marlboro sports tourism industry kind of how that all comes together and what that means to economic development in the city. So until then, have a wonderful Wednesday and thank you for joining us. Bye.